God is searching for you and me. He wants us to have ultimate freedom. And the freedom occurs when we jump into His arms, no matter how dirty we are, no matter how messed up we are, no matter how sin-stained we are, and He wants us to live with Him. Have you ever painted anything before? I'm sure you have. You've painted a house, a room. Maybe you like to paint, like acrylic, watercolor, whatever. As I spoke about last night, you know, it's, it's incredible how paint is transferred. We always wear these outfits and we always say, okay, I'm not gonna get any paint on me, but inevitably it's transferred. It's like it soaks into our skin. Then we have problems getting the paint off. Am I the only one? It'll end up in your hair, on your shoes, on some outfit. Paint gets everywhere, around the house. Paint. I'm not gonna lie, my favorite color combination is red, white, and blue. It really is. These flags, I mean, whenever I see the American flag, and you're probably the same way, it's like red, white, and blue. In one word, what does that celebrate? What does that mean? Freedom. It means freedom. There's nothing like the crisp colors of red, white, and blue. Today, the title of my message is Red, White, Blue, and You. Say that with me. Red, White, Blue, and You. Because during this weekend, I mean, this is 4th of July weekend, right? This is it. You're gonna wear and wave the red, white, and blue. Red, white, and blue will be everywhere. It's the ubiquitous colors of our country. I remember Lisa's address. Like, you know, we met when we were like 14 years old, my wife, Lisa. We celebrated our 40th anniversary this past Sunday. 40 years. It's, it's really, it's really a, 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 an amazing thing because I'm only 48. But, you know, we got married at eight years of age. No, not really. 40 years. Well, I traveled to her house a lot when we were, well, is it not, not, not talking, young people? It's when we were official, right? And, and, and we were like boyfriend, girlfriend. I asked her to be my, see air quotes, girlfriend. I would show up at her house, 519 Arrowwood Road, Columbia, South Carolina. Google it. A ranch style house on three acres, towering Carolina pine trees. There was one thing though that was always there, one thing that stuck out, one thing that I always saw, an American flag. Lisa's family, would, if you wanna talk about being patriotic, if you cut them, they would bleed red, white, and blue. They were that patriotic. Every 4th of July weekend, they would sing, Happy Birthday, America. Or as Lisa's dad pronounced it, Happy Birthday. That's another, another story. And Lisa's dad would get teary, and, and, and I just didn't grow up in a home where we sang, Happy Birthday, America. And in my naivete, in my stupidity, I didn't put two and two together. Lisa's father was a tank commander in World War II. He understood the sacrifice. He understood those bloody battlefields. He understood that he was a recipient, his family and friends were recipients of sacrifice. And I'm that way too. I mean, I've never fought in a war. I've never defended the US of A. Some of you have. And we salute you, literally. We honor you, we thank you. But most of us were like, okay, I'm just gonna reap the benefits of freedom. We often say, freedom began on July 4th, 1776, when the Declaration of Independence was signed and we see the first signature, that beautiful penmanship, John Hancock, right? We say, that is the beginning of freedom. Well, on one hand, for our nation, it was and is, but real freedom 
occurred 2,000 years ago on a hill outside of Jerusalem. The reason we can experience freedom today in this country is because of what Jesus secured for us 2,000 years ago when he spilled his blood for the sins of the world, was buried for three days and rose again because our nation was and is founded on that. We say the red, white, and blue, one nation under God. And for many, that's true, but more and more as we look at our culture, it's like, no, we're alongside God. And if you go on social media, a lot of people say, no, 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 forget God, I am God. The land of the free and the home of the brave. That's true for a lot of people. But for some, it's the land of the sheeple and the home of the woke. We don't understand freedom. Now, this sounds like a cliche, but it's, it is, but it's deep. I mean, freedom isn't free. We think, okay, freedom, freedom, and I'm talking to young people, freedom, I can do anything I want to do, say anything I want to say, be anybody I want to be, and all this stuff, it's just going buck wild. That's not freedom. That's anarchy, that's chaos. Freedom always has fences. You watch a basketball game, a football game, a baseball game, what if there were no rules, no fences? Oh, that's great. I just want to watch football players just go crazy. I want to watch baseball players just go crazy. Basketball players just go crazy. That's not freedom. Freedom always has fences. You were created, I'm created to experience ultimate freedom. Let me say it again. You were made, I was made to experience ultimate freedom. And the freedom, real freedom, I mean, I'm talking like Deep freedom, freedom on a holy another level comes through and from Jesus Christ. And I've got to ask you, are you free? Have you signed your declaration of independence? Have you put your John Hancock on that deal? Because here's what's so ironic about the Christian life. When we sign our declaration of independence, we're saying, we're totally dependent on the person of Jesus. Is Jesus your master? Is Jesus your savior? He wants you to experience, I'll say it again, ultimate freedom and ultimate freedom is following him. It's living for him. Do we have any dog owners here? Oh yeah, <clears throat> we have dogs. I just bought, I don't know, almost a year ago, a Great Dane. He's huge. Already he's a year old and he's like, I don't know, 130 to 150. And he's semi-obedient. He doesn't like his crate that much. And, and literally, I have to pull a Conor McGregor and wrestle him, MMA him, just to get him in the crate sometimes when he doesn't want to get into the crate. You can see these scratches on my arms. I have scratches on my back. I'm not going to take my shirt off, but just trust me. <laughs> Legend. Yeah, yeah, we've had a lot of big dogs. We have some golden doodles. Anybody have any golden doodles here? They're, 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 they're a great dog. Any dog that has oodle in its name, poodle, you know, is a really smart dog. One day our golden doodle escaped. I don't know why, because our golden doodles live the A-lister life, they really do. Mineral water, organic food, manis, petties, massages regularly. You know I'm lying, but they, they live a good life. They're in the fenced in yard, and the yard is pretty manicured. We have some cool plants and things like that. Water outside, food outside. We're always watching them. And, you know, if it gets too hot, come on in. You know, if they want to go outside, we'll let them go outside and chase squirrels and things like that. So in, in, this, in this doggy's brain, why would she run off? I don't know. I mean, to me, it's like ultimate freedom, right? Freedom with fences. But she ran off and we were really worried because we thought she was gone for good. Over an hour and a half, we can't find the dog. We're searching around the neighborhood. And it's funny when you search around the neighborhood and ask people questions about dogs. People are like, you know, power walking. 
Any of those people? Some of these people are jogging. I want to make fun of them, but I go, man, at least they're out there, you know? Guys who are from Texas in their 40s, here's how they talk. Here's the ubiquitous Texas accent. When guys get in their 40s, they don't open their mouths very much. They talk like this, everyone of them does, like this. I'm from Texas, yes, Uh uh-huh, sure. How are you talking and your mouth is not opening? Anyway, dog is lost and we, we see a guy and he's power walking. Hey, excuse me, have you seen a white dog, kind of a golden doodle? Yeah, I did, I saw one. Uh, across the freeway over there, I was out there and I also went near Dunkin' Donuts. So I saw him, yeah, I did. I didn't, I didn't know what the dog was doing. But... Okay, thank you, sir, thank you. Keep searching, searching, see someone else. See another guy, hey, have you seen a dog? <clears throat> yep, I sure have. A dog running out of Dunkin' Donuts and across the freeway over there. They talk the same. Why do we do that? That's why a lot of guys aren't laughing right now. You're like, that's me. (laughs) So finally, 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 we're looking, 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 looking. And I'm thinking this dog is dead. I mean, hate to say it. I didn't tell Lisa that, but I'm thinking, man, Emma. (laughs) So we're driving and I see Emma way down this, this road, way down this busy street. I'm thinking there's no way that's her. Sure enough, it was. She darted across the, the freeway and into these deep woods. I got a ticket. I hate to say it. I'm, I, I've not gotten a ticket in 20 years. I got a ticket coming back from Alasso Ranch a couple of nights ago in Italy, Texas. So, whoop, whoop, you know, they pull me over. And I'm looking, and this police officer, you know, sheriff, whatever, walks up to the car. Uh, sir, you were, you were going speed limit, uh, uh, no, over speed limit, uh, like, uh, like uh, 60 miles an hour. And I said, yes, sir. I said, you know, I'm a pastor. I tried to play the pastor card. <laughs> I'm a man of the cloth, a humble servant of the Lord. And officer, I was, yes, I was speeding. Yes, you sir, were. You were going fast. And listen, just slow down a little bit, but I'm going to have to give you a ticket. And so he starts writing the ticket. See, he talks the way every other 40-something-year-old Texas guy talks to and he gave me a ticket. So anyway, I don't know why I told you that, but I did. <laughs> we found Emma. She was in the woods, all muddy, and she jumped into my arms. We found her and Lisa took a picture of us. <laughs> See how happy I am? And look how happy Emma is. She's like, oh, thank you, Lord. I've been, I've been discovered. So she was going from that moment to ultimate freedom, right? God is searching for you and me. He wants us to have ultimate freedom. And the freedom occurs when we jump into his arms, no matter how dirty we are, no matter how messed up we are, no matter how sin-stained we are, and he wants us to live with him. He wants to be our master. I am Emma's master. So there's freedom with fences. We're made for fences. There are literally laws that liberate. One day Jesus was talking about freedom to a bunch of people and they just didn't get it. In John chapter eight, he was talking about freedom and he goes, you know, guys, you'll know the truth, he said, and the truth will set you, say it with me, free. Jesus was saying, I'm not just a truth, I am the truth, and this truth will set you free. Then, as his audience kind of did the pushback a little bit, he goes, anyone, the Bible says in verse 34, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Well, his, his crowd did not think that was cool. They're like, what? A slave? I mean, there's been slavery since pretty much the dawn of time, and Christ's audience was saying, slavery? We're not enslaved to anyone. We're free. Jesus was not talking about that. He was talking about what sin does. Sin, and we're all natural born sinners, enslaves us. It 
It gives us this ability to think sin is better than the Savior. It messes our mind up. Then when we think sin is better than the Savior, as we're living in sin, it will take us over the edge and the ledge. The Bible says it will lead to hell. The Bible says the wages of sin, what's a wage? It's something we work for. The wages of sin is death. That means physical death and spiritual death. But then it says in Romans 3, 23, Romans 6, 23, it says, but the gift of God, the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. What's a gift? You, you, don't, you don't work for a gift. What's a gift? You don't earn the gift. It's just something you receive or not. And Jesus offers himself to you and me. What he did 2,000 years ago on the cross, his death, burial, and resurrection, he offers it to you and me enslaved in sin. Jesus gives us the horsepower to overcome the penalty of sin, hell, and the power of sin. Now, we have the ability, the freedom to look at life and go, oh no, no, Jesus is my master. That is better than anything else the world offers. So literally, it sounds paradoxical. Jesus is our master, we're a slave to him. Yet we're freed up to follow him. Then he said in verse 36 of John chapter eight, if the son sets you free, if, in other words, it's your choice, we have the freedom of choice, then you'll be free indeed. How cool is that? Red, white, and blue. I love the colors, red, white, and blue. Are they on you? Red, white, and blue. Red is the blood of Jesus. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter one, verse seven, in him we have redemption through his, what? Blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. White is the cleansing of Jesus. Though your sins be as scarlet, the prophet Isaiah said, they can be as white as snow. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse 21, check this out, you're talking about freedom. God made him who had no sin, Jesus, to be sin for us so that in him we might become, we might become, we might become the righteousness of God. We cannot stand in front of the brilliant blaze of God's glory because we're sinners. Yet, Jesus did something for us we can't do for ourselves. He offers us this gift of eternal life. And the moment we receive it, we're forgiven, we're cleansed, we're born again, but check this out. The righteousness of Jesus, his perfection, is imputed into your life and mine. We're as white as snow. Somebody give me a clap right now. Those aren't my words, those are God's words. Red, white, have you been cleansed? And blue, 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 yeah, yeah, blue, water. Once we become a believer, the Bible says go, H2O. Get baptized, have you been baptized? Red, white, and blue. What are you waiting for, Acts chapter 22 says. Is that great? What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Get up. Be baptized and wash your sins away, calling on his name. Red, white, and blue, the colors. I mean, have they seeped into your soul? Have they been transferred from Jesus to your life? Because once these colors get on you, you can't get them off. But I've gotta ask you, red, white, and blue, and you, what are you doing with the red, white, and blue? The blood of Jesus. Just like our soldiers shed their blood for our freedom in even a deeper way, think about what Jesus did. White, he's washed us as white as snow. There's no degrees to sin. 
Sin is sin. We can be washed and cleansed. And then the first thing that the Bible says we're to do after we become Christian, you won't believe this, is to put our flag up for Jesus. When we wave the flag, we're saying, I'm an American. I mean, this doesn't make me American, but I'm an American. I advertise the red, white, and blue. I'm not shy to wear red, white, and blue. I'm not shy to do this. I'm not shy, no, no. I am a citizen of the United States of America. The first thing we're to do after we become a believer is, I'm a part of the family of God. I'm a citizen of heaven. Have you been baptized? Well, first of all, have you received Christ? That's the, that, that's the first thing, red, white, and blue, but have you been baptized? Every time I talk about baptism, it's hilarious, even adults, questions abound. Opinions are thrown out. Yet so many of these opinions are not biblical. Simple questions for them, the baby question. Well, I was baptized as a baby, so was my wife. Okay, good, but you didn't know what you were doing. Your parents did, but you didn't. There's no infant baptism in the Bible. Number two, the Clorox question. Does baptism have the ability to supernaturally cleanse me of my sins? I mean, if there was a baptism machine and I could get baptized a million times a day, no, 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 no. It's symbolic. Again, I hold this flag in the air. Does that make me an American? No, I might not be an American. So just because you're baptized doesn't make you a Christian. The next is the attorney question. Any attorneys here? Don't lift your hand. Attorneys love to argue everything. Well, technically speaking, can someone be a Christian without being baptized? Yes. Case in point, the thief on the cross that became a believer right before he died. Jesus didn't say, wait, for you to become a Christian, you gotta jump down off the cross and get baptized. No. So technically speaking, you can be a Christian without being baptized. However, if you're able, get baptized, get advertised. Another question, the fourth one, if you're keeping score, is the mechanics question. Should I be sprinkled, spritzed, poured? How should I get baptized? When we have a question, we go, what does the Bible say? Not what does church history say? Not what does this group say? No, no, what does the Bible say? Every baptism in the Bible was by immersion. And guess what? Baptism is about the red, white, and blue. You go under the water, you come out of the water. The water symbolizes the blood of Jesus, red, that cleanses us, white, of all sins. And water is blue. Have you been baptized? And some of you here have never, ever asked Christ to come into your life. You've never received the gift. That's group A. Group B would be those you've received the gift, but you've never been baptized. Group A, when you pray this prayer with me, if you want to, it's your freedom of choice. The next thing you should do is get baptized. And group B, what are you waiting for? The Bible says, get up. Get up, stand up, right? A little Marley for you this morning. What are you waiting for? You mean you're gonna go, okay, I am totally relying on this gift of salvation to spend eternity with Jesus. I'm totally relying on his sacrifice. He took away the penalty of sin. He's dealing with the power of sin, but I'm gonna keep it private. Huh? Jesus says, if you profess me before men, I'll profess you before the Father. Red, white, and blue. What are you going to do? Father, thank you for this message. Thank you for your truth. Thank you for freedom. I thank you for the freedom that I have to follow you. I thank you for freedom with fences. I thank you for the laws that liberate. I know there are many people here, many watching online, especially during this holiday weekend. If you've never asked Christ to come into your life, say this prayer with me. That's right, just with me. This is the same prayer that I prayed years ago. I'll help you with it. Here's what you say. God, I know you love me. And I admit to you right up front that I'm a sinner. I've messed up. I've fallen short. I turn from my sins. I repent and turn to you, Jesus. 
I believe that you died on the cross for my sins, rose again after three days. And right now, on this 4th of July weekend, I sign my Declaration of Independence. I put my John Hancock on the deal. I ask you to come into my life. The moment you say that, there's this transaction that takes place. Your guilt for God's grace, your sin for the Savior of the world. Jesus Christ, just say it, come into my life. And the moment you said that, you're free, I'm talking about free indeed to discover what freedom is all about. Hi guys, thank you so much for watching the Ed Young YouTube channel. That's right, and if you wanna be inspired, encouraged, and challenged like never before, subscribe and click the notification button. We believe this channel can help change your life.